Another story we're bringing out in the open tonight, Muslim cab drivers who won't pick up people who carry alcohol. If they are that strict about their religion, should they get another job? Next, we are bringing two racially charged murder cases out in the open tonight, all but forgotten for decades. They are suddenly red hot. The first takes us back to Mississippi during the civil rights era and the brutal, unsolved killing of two black teenagers. Well, tonight, more than 40 years later, a suspect is finally facing charges in those deaths. And it's thanks to two men, a dedicated filmmaker and a man who refused to let the memory of his dead brother fade away. Rusty Dornan on that case that defied investigators for so many decades. For 43 years, this was the only marker of the death of 19-year-old Charles Moore, a misspelled tombstone in the outer reaches of the local cemetery. Then two years ago, his brother Thomas decided that was it. I promised him in 2005 at his grave in, in Franklin County, Mount Olive Cemetery, that I will fight until I die. A promise to find justice in the deaths of his brother Charles and Charles's friend Henry D. Two African-American teens brutally murdered in 1964. Their killings never solved. So Thomas Moore went home to Meadville, Mississippi with a CBC documentary filmmaker and Donna Ladd, a reporter from the Jackson Free Press. She took us to where it all began on Main Street. This spot is where they were hitchhiking. According to FBI informants in documents dating from 1964, the African-American teens were picked up by James Seal and Charles Edwards, reputed members of the Ku Klux Klan. The documents allege Seal and Edwards took the young men here to the Homochito National Forest. They took them out of the car, they tied them to a tree, and kind of around their waist, and then they took these long skinny sticks that uh, we call bean sticks and just started beating them. When Thomas Moore went with CBC filmmaker David Ridgen to this spot, the impassioned brother acted out the deed. The two young men are believed to have been alive when they were reportedly then tied to an engine block and thrown into the old Mississippi River. Edwards and Seal were arrested in 1964, charged with kidnapping and murder. The FBI turned the case over to local authorities. But a justice of peace said witnesses refused to testify, and the charges against Seal and Edwards were dropped. There just wasn't enough evidence, they said. When Thomas Moore vowed justice for his brother, James Seal was thought to have died years earlier. Then to his utter shock, Moore found out otherwise. They said, no, he haven't passed away. And they directed us to where he lived. That changed our mission. Seal lived here in an RV on his brother's property. I'm, I'm calling for James Ford Seal. Moore did everything but walk up to Seal's door. He even planted signs outside the property. In July 2005, the U.S. Attorney's Office agreed to take a fresh look at the case. Then 19 months later, just yesterday, James Seal was arrested. Meadville resident Gloria Bonds went to school with one of the murder victims. I never thought that I would live to see this day, you know, that when, when someone was arrested for their murders. Seal has consistently denied involvement in the murders. Almost exactly 42 years after charges against him were dropped, today James Seal was walked into federal court under heavy guard, arraigned on kidnapping and conspiracy charges in the deaths of Charles Moore and Henry D. Rusty Dornan, CNN, Meadville, Mississippi.